Some plants may benefit from using gibberellic acid to stimulate germination for the seeds. So gibberellins are a really interesting suite of hormones that plants produce, and there's a lot of different numbers of them. Plants have different numbers. They can have 12 different kinds of gibberellins. There's a lot of different things that they do, and they may have different effects on plants just uh, developmentally. So sometimes gibberellic acid is used to stimulate elongation of inner nodes on things like grapes so that you don't get molding on there. Um, we're using it for seed germination. Sometimes it's for, a lot of times it's for elongation of different areas. So one of the problems that we might have with gibberellic acid is if we, if we give it too much gibberellic acid, we may stimulate germination, but also end up with severe elongation in the cells, which would make a, a weaker plant. So there's a fine balance that you have for how much gibberellic acid and which kind you would want to use. I purchased this as a product from um, Jail Hudson Seedsman. You can order it through their seed catalog, and it'll come with this kit that gives you some gloves, some really in-depth directions, a couple of pipettes, some um, solution-making bottles, and then your gibberellic acid on the inside. The gibberellic acid is just a really tiny white powder, and I'm not gonna open it up. Well, I could show you the inside of this, I guess. It just comes in a little um, envelope kind of thing, and they give you enough in here to uh, dilute to make a 1000 ppm solution. So that's 1000 parts per million. And then they also give you, um, they recommend that maybe you want to try half that dosage. So they give you a bottle to dilute that also to 500 parts per million. Like I said, each plant responds differently and it depends on how much the concentration is that you're giving them as well as the duration for the amount of time that you're keeping them in. I'm I started some yesterday, so we're going for 24 hours for exposure to gibberellic acid of both the 500 ppm solution and 1,000. And then we did one that was just plain distilled water as well so that um, we can have that control to see if no gibberellic acid is actually beneficial. So what we're going to do this with then is a plant called Lyceum exertum or wolfberry. It's a really cool shrub with edible seed or edible fruits on it. And the seeds on it are about the same size as blueberry seeds. They're very tiny. So we're going to count out, I think I did 20 for each of the others. Um, realistically, the number for this one doesn't matter because it's just the demo. I already set up the experiment yesterday. I figured I would start soaking the DI water at the same time as the gibberellic acid so that we didn't have a confounding effect of Im them imbibing water. So that's when they like take in moisture. I wanted them all to be taking in moisture at the same amount of time, which is why I started the DI at 24 hours too. So I'll just, I'll just sprinkle some on here for you guys to see in general. These are pretty tiny seeds. So I'm not going to worry about counting these ones because I've already counted out the ones for the actual experiment. But now I'm going to show you how to fold this paper and how to administer uh, our gibberellic acid. Okay, so we're just going to kind of get these seeds towards the middle and we're going to just fold the bottom up and then we'll go, we're just going to go clockwise around here so that we can lock those seeds in place. You could do like a jeweler's fold or an herbarium fold here if you wanted to. There's a lot of different kinds of folds that people can use. I like this one because it's going to it's going to be when I open it up, I won't have any surprises about it being stuck to an outside edge or something. It it'll be in the true center of the paper of the uh, filter paper. And this is just a regular coffee filter. So then we're going to take our gibberellic acid solution and I will take our um, weaker of the two just because I have more of it to show you guys. And I have my pipette labeled so that I know which concentration I'm doing this with. Oops, upside down to you guys. Okay. And now I'm just going to take enough of this solution. You want to make sure you're wearing gloves. You don't want to get it all over your hands. Um, I'm just going to take enough of this solution to just wet the paper. We don't want it to be oversaturated. We don't want it to be soaking. So I'm just going to take and kind of drizzle that on there. 
until the whole thing is saturated. Usually it takes about three of these um, small pipettes to do it. I usually go with two on one side and then just kind of squish with your fingers a little bit and then flip and it'll probably be one or two on this side. You could probably do this as an experiment where you quantify it a lot more specifically. Like you could go through and you could be very precise about how much you're administering to each one. Um, exactly how long you're going to do this. This is just going to be kind of a quick and dirty thing that hopefully we'll see some results for. We're not publishing these results, so this is just for our information. All right, so there we go. This is sufficiently wet, but not oversaturated. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in a baggie for 24 hours so that it now looks like this. This is after 24 hours. Oh, and this is the 1000 ppm. We just did the 500. So this is the highest concentration of gibberellic acid that we did. And now we're going to take it out of that gibberellic acid. So we, we had it in gibberellic acid for a while, but too much gibberellic acid ends up being really problematic too. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to take a regular paper towel and some regular water. And to get this wet, we're just going to dip one end in and fold over on top so that it wicks up through capillary action. We'll let it sit there for a couple minutes. It'll be a little extra saturated on one end and not as saturated on the other. That's totally fine. I should have put some food coloring in here. I could have made it a pretty color demonstration. Okay, so I'll just get all three of those going. Excellent. See, my water's already up to here now. Oops. And while I do that, let's go ahead and move that so I don't accidentally use that one instead of one of these. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take these out now. And... Oops, I thought I folded this to make it easier. Hilarious. Okay, there we go. And then unfold this way, unfold this way. And now I have this on the inside. And we want to transfer all of these little seeds onto this wet paper towel. There we go. Maybe we can try double and sticking. Nope, well, there's one. These seeds are so small. <laughs> and then we'll just leave it in this um, moist paper towel for, oh, I don't know. It said on the packet between two and seven weeks. I'm hoping that it's closer to two than seven. so that you guys can see some results. But we'll probably just leave it in the paper towel until we see the radical emerge at the base. And then when we see that, then we will, um, we can transfer them probably to the surface of some soil. These seeds are so tiny that it looks to me like they might benefit from light as well to germinate. A lot of times seeds are really tiny like poppies or basil or lettuce. I guess lettuce can be kind of bigger. Some of them require light to germinate, but we'll do an experiment about um, using light for germination too, eventually. All right, so there we go. And now we're just gonna kind of roll that in there. Tap it gently. And now we will put this um, in a bag that's labeled for what our treatment was. The date that we did this was the 30th of April. That's when we started with the treatment. And now we are gonna put them in here. 24 hours later. So they were in gibberellic acid for 24 hours. Okay, I'm gonna do the other two and then um, we'll teach you something else.